Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm talking today a little bit about impending food shortages. It is a big subject on YouTube in the prepper community. There's many, many videos on the subject talking about impending food shortages, watch out the supply chain breaks and all this other stuff and not enough food in the supermarket and so on and so forth. A lot of that is to encourage people to try to stock up uh, some provisions now to fill that pantry up. I wanted to just touch on the subject a little bit. First of all, we've already seen this. This already happened during the so-called pandemic the last few years. We already experienced shortages and we still are. You saw when not just food, but other common goods, vitamins ran out, toilet paper ran out, um, toiletries, other types of toiletries. Bleach. Like, yeah, bleach and, uh, well, it's not quite a toiletry. But, yeah, but bleach ran out. Yeah, bleach ran out, baby wipes, um, all sorts of stuff like that. Over-the-counter remedies were wiped out in HBA, a lot of other sanitary items. There were no eggs, there was no milk, there was no meat which doesn't make any sense because most of that is not imported. We don't import eggs, you know, we don't import milk. We do throw a lot away mm -hmm. and that's a, uh, something that I've complained about quite a bit because it bothers me how much is wasted. They talk about people being hungry, starving people in America, starving people all over the world, not just the United States but globally speaking. More than 60% of the food that is produced is disposed of before it even hits the supermarkets. It's uh, anybody, a farmer out there, dairy or um, hogs or anything, or you, you grow crops, how much of it is thrown away? How much of it are you encouraged to dispose of because of changes in the market? Uh, they throw away millions of tons of food. And it doesn't just get turned into fertilizer, it gets in, put into the dump, which means you're robbing nutrients from certain areas and then forced to purchase more fertilizer to add nutrients back into the soil. Long, you know, long story short, we throw away millions and millions of tons all over the world from the farm, from the manufacturers. When I worked at uh, Frito-Lay, you wouldn't believe the waste. I mean, uh, some of it went to slop houses for hogs, but that was only 20% of the waste. We threw away uh, tons of it every day tons of uh, corn and wheat product just went to the dump so it's being thrown out anyways most of what we were short on was stuff that we produce in the United States so there's really no excuse for it like I said eggs are not imported milk and dairy most dairy products are not imported we do import some meat from like Canada and South America but not that much not that much most of it is done here so why couldn't it get to the market what happened they weren't allowed to they were regulated out of it. And we're still seeing those shortages now. So the shortages are already going on. You, we've had plenty of times, even recently, we've gone to the market, there's no eggs, or the milk is almost gone, or even in frozen foods, the uh, we were looking for french fries a mm -hmm. couple of weeks back. There were none of any brand. It was completely empty. Uh, certain frozen vegetables are gone. It's not there. Um, pet food because you know we we take care of a lot of strays pet food is short especially the canned stuff the soft food which is better for outdoor cats because it helps with their dehydration or helps keep them hydrated I should say so pet food shortages and a lot of that is manufactured in the United States most of it is I believe so why are these shortages happening it almost seems like it's deliberate or by design and indeed you should be prepared for something like that. You should stock your pantry. You should not to appear or try to get anybody to be paranoid. There is sort of a sense of urgency, but you should be prepared for an emergency, even if it's not that kind of emergency where, okay, now there's just no food because the trucks stopped running or whatever's going on or industry has collapsed, you know, whatever, a comet hit the earth. We're not talking about that sort of thing. But even if you're in a disaster, a tornado hits your area, an earthquake, you could lose your job and be out of work for months, a year or more, 
and rely on your pantry overstock just to supplement your income. There's a lot of a lot of points. There's a lot of points for it. I think where uh, problems are caused, and you see a lot of this in prepper videos and in the prepper community, they put these videos out and they try to express a sense of urgency, but they make you feel like that there's some pending disaster that they're guaranteeing is gonna happen because I've been hearing videos like that for a year. Any day now, it's gonna go down and then there's not gonna be any food and any day doesn't really necessarily come. Again, during the so-called pandemic, quote, quote, um, we saw some of these shortages. Even uh, pantries got strained, which is rare. You know, pantries usually have so much that they throw it away. You know, I did a video talking about that a, a couple of years back pantry uh, we had gone to a pantry uh, they were begging us to take the stuff because they said we're gonna have to throw all this out we don't have the storage for it the, um, they almost kind of uh, they make predictions you know they become false prophets of a sort guaranteeing something's gonna happen that doesn't hit and it makes the entire community look kind of foolish because then you have all the naysayers are like, see, he said that two years ago, and I can still go to the market and get blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> yes, there should be a sense of urgency. Yes, you should work on this. Don't date set. Never date set, no matter how close it looks. Because, you know, there are signs that we're facing something like this again. With uh, having trouble. Again, we already are seeing things missing from the supermarket. Some days you go in there and there's no poultry. Still, even though the pandemic is supposed to be over, it ended as soon as the invasion happened. Suddenly it didn't matter anymore. But uh, those things are still going on and there's really no excuse for it unless something is stopping it from happening. Most of that is produced right here. We're not importing all of that. So why isn't it getting to market? What's going on? something's going on something funny going on and again we throw away so much food people there's really no excuse for anyone being hungry in any country because all these countries do it it's not just the United States it's not just Western countries every country based on market yes even socialist and communist countries because people are like oh if the government regulated that listen the fewer fingers or the fewer pies that the government has their dirty little fingers in the better believe me if they regulate prices then they will upheave everything but even countries like that routinely throw away tons and tons of food there's really no excuse for it unless something else is going on and I hesitate to speculate on that too much because I get in enough trouble here on this channel talking about these sorts of things so yes absolutely do be prepared for it yes do stock your pantry no it is not hoarding okay because I know they love to throw that out they've thrown that out for decades I've seen advertisements from World War II where they accuse people of hoarding they say oh they're hoarding flour they're hoarding sugar the evil hoarders keeping babies from having uh, from having sugar for their oatmeal that that is actually from a, uh, a propaganda ad that I read from like 1942 or something if I remember correctly because of shortages from the war why was there a sugar shortage during the war was less being produced if if there was or wasn't you'll never prove it now <laughs> because history tends to fade away doesn't it um, I don't know any thoughts on the subject something I saw interesting today on the internet Okay. They were talking about the solar storms. Oh, yeah. And how they got these solar storms happening. Mm -hmm. And with the sunburst, it could affect the satellites. Yeah. And I mean, they're giving you warning now. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you lose your cable, your food stamp card doesn't work, <laughs> or the gas pumps don't work and the prices go higher. You uh -huh. know, we've blamed Putin enough, now we can blame the sun Solar spot. flares. Yeah, yeah, solar flares. It's their fault. You know, you don't get your free cable or your cell phone don't work, so you can't get on Facebook. Stuff like that. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, and that sort of thing happens all the time, and there's a limit to how much they can predict it. 
Mm -hmm. oh, the, and the last time there was, uh, well, no, there was one a few years back that uh, affected Canada pretty good on the east coast of Canada. I think it, they were down for like a week. Mm. Uh, prior to that, the last big one, um, it was a global. And that's when, uh, I think a lot of people know that story, all of the um, telegraph lines blew out. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that was the most sophisticated form of communication that there was at the time. So yeah. it wasn't that big of a deal. Nowadays, it would be crippling. Yeah. But I bet you the IRS still has backups hidden somewhere that... <laughs> yeah, all of their computers work by floppy disks, and they got a room with, like, billions of floppy disks. Yeah, probably. So, you know, and they got paper files and file cabinets in this big room. There's a reason why all of the silos in America are still running on 70s technology. Yeah, people criticize them for not updating it. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for one thing, it can't be hacked. You can't break into it, you can't access it. And a lot of that solid state stuff would hold up to a solar flare or an EMP. Um, so again, I'll throw it out there. Any thoughts on the subject of the whole thing with the stockpiling food and pantries? And do you think some like prepper channels push too far almost kind of date set, kind of set themselves up to be false prophets, like I suggested, um, or am I overreacting to it? You know, maybe I am. Maybe some people need that kind of a push to light a fire under them. I'm not saying, again, that you shouldn't stock up. I absolutely advocate having a supply of food and water and other things so that you can take care of yourself during an emergency most people barely have a three-day supply of food in their homes. Hmm. What are they going to do? They're going to come scratching and begging and scraping and chopping each other to bits over a can of peaches. Hmm. Hopefully, you won't be in that fracas. Anyways, uh, thoughts? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comment section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. We hope that you did. Share it if you can, subscribe if you're new, all that good stuff. Check out some of the other videos if you have not. Share it if you can, it's you know, probably the only way it'll get seen. ScrewTube does not like this channel. Um, curious about random cat pictures in the video, it helps with the uploading algorithm and those are some of the strays that we help out. Um, if you wanted to help the channel, there are links for that down below, every little bit helps and we sure do appreciate it. And if that's it, then what more can I say? But Stay frosty, folks, and thanks for watching.